Welcome, everybody, to the Echo Arena VR Master League Season 6, Week 3. Ooh, I had to process a lot of different esports in my mind there. And a hype matchup this afternoon, Overkill versus Redshift. My name is Nightfire. I'm your sole caster in today's adventure through the Echoverse. Between two top teams that, uh, frankly, I'm excited to see duke it out. A storied matchup here this afternoon, if you will. Overkill coming in in Season 5, has gone up against Redshift three times in Season 5 and won all three times. Redshift have not managed to take a W against Overkill in the history of them playing against each other. But of course, those matchups have been close. No blowout games, very close score lines there. So if anything, what we're in store for here this afternoon is a very close match. And I appreciate you, uh, a few of you folks for waiting around for this round to start, as I know uh, the, the timer was maybe a little bit uh, late on getting into the action. But uh, we are still waiting for a fourth to connect over on uh, Overkill's side, and then we will get into it. There's a, a speculation that they may have to call a timeout uh, at the start of this. So before we, before we can even get into the round, it may be a few more minutes before we actually get into round number one between these two teams. But uh, we do have them warming up and getting ready, and I'm very much looking forward again uh, to this matchup and to my, I think, first solo cast in maybe a season or two. Uh, so it's going to be very exciting to be hanging out with you fine folks at home who are tuning in on Twitch and enjoy what should be a pretty good competitive back and forth again. You look at the score lines, I'll give you the exact metrics, the exact data that you're looking for. Uh, Redshift losing 34 to 41. That was actually uh, a game, uh, game three decider. Uh, Redshift losing 27 to 19. That was two games, and 26 to 19. That was two games. So again, very close score lines coming in here from the Redshift team. Just so close to, to inching out ahead and uh, and taking a series, but they haven't been able to do it yet. So. We'll see if the roster here this afternoon is enough to sort of bring that uh, aggression that they need. Maybe they can replicate that first series they had, take it to a best of three, or simply knock them out in two. We'll have to uh, simply wait and see. As again, we are waiting for this uh, fourth to populate in to the overkill side. I do have the active roster over on Redshift. That's going to be Steel Skydiver 20, Caesar Pub, and Saluna 22. And again, nothing really out of the ordinary there. That's what they have been running consistently uh, throughout Season 5 and what we should expect more of here in Season 6. And so again, more data to support that we're going to get a good series here between these two because they even have the same rosters that they did when they were duking it out in Season 5. So, you know, especially at the Master Tier level, I anticipate that both of these teams have really done their homework uh, they've done their research, so to speak. If anything, they have three games to go back and look at. What worked for us against this team in the past, what doesn't, uh, and try and replicate that kind of success. But, uh, yeah, for now, we're just simply, again, waiting for that fifth force to connect. And for now, we do have Anubis, Knifrush, and Ghost Duck. So it leaves likely Spy to come in uh, for their fourth, but we won't know until it happens. And the, quest the question there... Uh, Nightfire, who do you think is going to win? And then Newt questioning who Nightfire even is. I don't even know who the person sitting in front of you is, Newt. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Newt knows who I am. Believe me. Uh, who do I think is going to win? I don't know. Again, I think if you look at the stats, and if you go by connoisseur votes, Redshift had uh, two votes to the nine that the community was voting on to overkill. And so if I'm going to go with what everyone else thinks, it's going to be overkill here this afternoon. Redshift's certainly the underdogs, at least in the community's eyes. And so, uh, again, just waiting for that lobby to be readied up. And we have officially gone into a timeout. So uh, a timeout used, I think, I don't know, I'll have to, uh, don't quote me on rules ever, but uh, I think they have one or two, or two, I'll throw it out there. I don't know how many timeouts they have, but I know they have timeouts, and so... Uh, one has been used here to try and get their fourth in lobby. I think you can't go back-to-back -back timeouts. I could be wrong on that. Again, don't quote me on the rules. Uh, and so they may have to play at least some portion of the game um, if they don't get their fourth in here in time. But uh, I, I, I'm not the referee. I'm just here to enjoy high-quality echo action like you fine folk are. Uh, how has my day been? I appreciate that question. It's been great. Fantastic. I'm excited 
about a lot of truly just esports in general. You know, obviously Echo Arena's season is ripe. Season six kicking off a lot of hype around teams playing in this season. Uh, we also have the Blast on first season finishing next week. Uh, this weekend, I'll be I'll be casting and spectating that. Very much looking forward to that. I'll be joined by great casters over in the Blast on community, Doctor Oolong and Captain Fabulous. So if you want to catch something different, I would uh, recommend that. That'll be on venues on Saturday and Sunday, starting at 10 uh, a.m. PST. I'm also going to be hopping into some onward. We have the Pavlov season go, and there's just a lot of esports. Uh, in particular, VR esports, in particular, VRML leagues that are running right now that uh, I'm really excited about and invested in tuning into and seeing who's going to come out on top. Um, still waiting for the four, so again, it's just me rambling here, buying time until we are ready to get in, because believe me, I'm just as eager to see uh, where this battle ends. And um, I think... It would be really tough to have to go into a 4v3. Obviously, your third week into the season in the master tier, not exactly some uh, a direction that you want to have to kick things off in. And um, They have the full roster. If I'm looking at the uh, their players, they have six in the roster. So, you know, ideally there'd be a sub for them to dip into. Uh, but we haven't seen them come into the lobby yet, and so we are still waiting. And so, again, I appreciate you fine folk that are tuning in here and are waiting for the action. Um, I'm, not just, I'm not trying to drum it up this much, believe me. <laughs> I want to get into the game as soon as we can. But we have had that timeout called, and so a timeout has been used to buy, this, uh, to buy overkill time. And, again, not a place that you want to be in uh, in an ideal world. And so um, only time will tell. And we'll see who that fourth is and if there's a fourth. Otherwise, Redshift may be looking at their first win against Overkill. But uh, anything can happen. And there's still, again, according to the team, plenty of time for them to get their fourth in. So uh, <laughs> we'll have to see if that happens. I think we may go to a brief intermission, just a couple of minutes, while we wait for their fourth to reconnect. I've really been trying to buy the time to get us to that a uh, moment where the fourth logs in and then we get into the round but it hasn't happened yet so i think we are going to go to a brief break and when we come back it will be the start of round one i appreciate you all uh hanging out and tuning in i really do and you know maybe uh just to buy a few more minutes we don't have to go to break yet i can talk about our sponsors that do support the league we appreciate oh yeah i did it <laughs> we got all four in uh <laughs> i do do appreciate the sponsors that do support uh, the league, VRWare, uh, one of our merchandise sponsors, offering fantastic merch, a variety of products, water bottles, everything you could want, VRML branded. Uh, Arma with great jerseys. Uh, you'll see me wearing those on weekends and on venues, showcases. HyperX, obviously, with the HyperX Quadcast, ask the headphones and the prizes to our winners. Uh, Asterion with the fantastic mounts. You've seen their ad run. Uh, stylized mounts amongst a variety of other products. And VR cover, providing you with fantastic comfort cushion for your head. I think that's all of them. I think I squeezed them in in time. Now we're going into the action. Round one kicks off between Overkill and Redshift. Overkill in orange, Redshift in blue. The Joust going to Redshift's side. And a nice pass down here. Pub waiting for it. It's going to be an open three, but no, the stack's there in time. Anubis scoops it up and denies that three from going in. We're off to the races indeed with this battle. The pace quick and furious. Redshift hunting for any sort of goal they can land from distance but can't quite connect it. The defense is there and ready. Overkill have come to play here and now their chance and an attack. The three is sunk there. It looked like for a second it was going to get scooped up but Ghost Duck finds the three just past the stack that can't quite get set up in time. A reversal of what Redshift were trying to deploy there against Overkill. 3-0 out the gate. Overkill Starting things off just like they have with the rest of this, uh, with the rest of their games against Redshift and into a lead. Good pass there over to Saluna on the side and just buying time now. A bit of calm for us here at the desk as we wait for the passing sequence and the offensive setup to come through here. Good pass to the bottom of Pub. Defense is pushing in aggressive. It forces the shot onto the goal and a bit wide there. 
as Saluna tries to take the shot under pressure. Almost a clear. Ghost Duck, thankfully, there to scoop it up, does get it all the way down range, and that actually pays off to be a great clear, but no one's there to grab it. Saluna behind the goal, ready to scoop it up. A bounce shot nearly off the backboard. Floats a bit too high, and a good stun from Ghost Duck ends up with Pub stealing it out of their hands, full clearing it down the tunnel into the trap. Is the stack going to get here in time? It doesn't look like it. Steal. Tried to scoop that one up in the tunnel, but couldn't quite get it. And a battle for dispossession ends with Anubis getting it between three defensive players there. And then, well, nobody was at goal. They were all trying to get the disc. And open three presents itself again. Anubis puts their team up 6-0 to zero here. Do apologize for the tech issues, but they have been sorted. Offbeat on cams, doing a great job behind the production side of things. We appreciate them getting that all to your liking on stream. Good passing sequence here inside the trap, and looks like this uh, Redshift trying to draw out this defense that otherwise has been very good playing the player-to-player -player, uh, defense style. They're really forcing the passing, forcing that pressure in the shots, and there's a great dive and stun. It's almost a clear, but that gets scooped up by Anubis, and Anubis redirects it down through the midfield. The Redshift duo is there to grab it. And Saluna is going to scoop this one up. A good pass to the bottom of Trench. And Caesar looking for something here. An unfortunate disconnect opens it up for a 4v3 opportunity here. If Redshift do want to try and capitalize on this, they may be looking for at least the two, but the ding off the side and a quick scoop up by Anubis. The clear to the bottom of the trench floats up to the top and a lot of time being bought here by Overkill. Time an ally of theirs now as they have this 6-0 lead. Aggression maybe not necessarily an ally of theirs. The bit disc does get up inside their zone. And a great bounce pass to the top, opens it up for Saluna. An absolute beautiful cross pass there. That really allows, finally, Redshift to punch through the defensive wall of Overkill. And, well, the 4v3 advantage likely to play uh, into effect there. But now that we're into the game, we're seeing the impact of having to burn that timeout early. They can't, they can't pull, uh, put a timeout here now. And so they have to play 3v4. I guess, obviously, if they hadn't pulled, burned the timeout early, they still would have had to play 3v4. So what's the difference in reality? But still, that's all theory crafting, okay? We're into the action right now. And they're still trying to do what they can with 3v4 because eventually that fourth is going to reconnect. And they have now. Hopefully they can be popping out of the tunnel any moment here, rejoining the squad, reinvigorating, if you will, this, tr this trio that really has weathered a potential much worse storm. Only two points scored when they were down a player, and now Redshift have to try and, well, break through the line that is, again, sort of rebuilt. This overkill team looking good as they manage to pass their way up, pass the defense, and a great dive from Steel Skydiver. Great read off of the pass, scoops it up, and an almost open three again snagged out of the air before it gets to the goal. A great denial of that three, an almost goal there off the side. Uh, and a great cross pass to the Knife. The stun works there, the team works there, the defense was not there. Two points gets put in, a six point lead now for Overkill. <laughs> I see Psychiatic commenting on us being late. Yes, indeed, we had a timeout to buy time for the team to join, uh, if you did hear me earlier. And so, yeah, certainly a, uh, a long start to get here, but we are here. If anything, it'll make it a nice, clean transition for us to go into uh, our next matchup after this, which starts at 6 p.m. PST, uh, T-minus 45 minutes from now, roughly. Uh, so do keep the eyes peeled, but games in front of us here. Half of round one still left in the bag for Redshift to try and do something, and only a two-goal lead. Two threes puts them right back in this. Of course, putting it through Overkill's defensive wall is going to be tough. They've been putting up great aggressive defense that has finally bit them in the butt just a little bit there. The dive for that disc, they couldn't get the stun. The juking on, on the shield with the disc opens it up for that too. Lucky it wasn't a three and they didn't shoot it a little bit farther outside of the zone, but they needed to use that shield as an anchor and so it pushes them inside the bubble. 
Offensive joust for Overkill. The first in what feels like a couple of minutes. Certainly does go well, though, for the Overkill squad as they get inside Redshift's zone pretty handily. Good passing sequence back and forth. A 1v2. Yes, indeed. It's going to be just that pub not able to leech on and get the stun in time. And really seeing Overkill just quickly answer back to anything Redshift puts up. They opened up with those two open threes, really, that haven't since been able to really uh, be made. And so just kind of a tough back half here for Redshift. They need to obviously string several goals together to try and chip away at this six-point lead. And they do have a good passing sequence. That is a shot on goal from the tube that goes just a bit wide. Trying to come back here with some threes. It certainly would be nice. It would only make it a one-goal lead, but they're going to be some of the hardest goals to sink in. And there's a pass to the bottom that floats a bit wide. A nice scoop up from Saluna that passes it back to Pub, and they're painting back and forth here. And it wasn't it was Caesar actually that scooped that up, passed it to Pub. But either way, Saluna has their hands on the disc, and they're going to be the one to find the two points. Maybe a premonition I had had in my mind that I knew Saluna was going to be involved. But either way, four-point lead now. Can overkill, chip back, put up another two. Keep this lead stable and really uh, potentially secure themselves a nice, confident round one. That's the question off of this offensive joust that everyone should be thinking, or at least asking themselves. And you can see that double stack aggression trying to get in here up against overkill, but really good and accurate passes. Ultimately, Pub does scoop it up and intercept, but can't quite clear it out as Knifrich is there and grabs it out of thin air. What was what was attempted to seem maybe a uh, tunnel clear ends up going right into Knife's hands, and Overkill keeps the pressure on. A nice one-two pass across there. That shot goes just a touch wide. Looked like they had the opportunity with the give-and-go, but couldn't quite make it, and as the clock ticks down, it all works out for Overkill. It's going to be a trench shot. I think it is. Does it go in? No, it doesn't touch high. The stack is there, and they overshoot. Saluna so does scoop it up, passes it back to Pub, and Pub's here to thankfully put that two in. Get Took a little watch. bit of time for Redshift to find that goal and what was a very open goal for quite a while, but they do find it. Recover from that overshoot. And now it's only a one-goal lead. Overkill, not feeling so confident now. A minute left on the clock. The question is, do you try and buy time with the accurate passing that they've sort of displayed here? Do you risk the intercept, or do you try and push for another goal? There's a bit of a bounce pass, but the stack wasn't quite ready to fly towards it off of that bounce. And so instead, the disc gets up, and it's a 1-2. The dive from, uh, who was that, steal in goal doesn't quite catch Ghost Duck. The stack just didn't get back there in time, and Redshift left their goal and their goalie alone. Two-point lead, two-goal lead. Don't think there's actually enough time. Oh, uh, maybe there is. There is. There is just enough time for two goals. And you can see Overkill recognizes this. Uh, is there enough time for two goals? No. It's going to be 12-10. We're going to end. Yeah, the timer is going to tick down. Off of the timer in the tube, it's going to end before they get to launch. And uh, there's not even an opportunity for that stack to come flying in and intercept and try for a two. And that's the round. But Orange takes the win. that is going to be round one into the hands of Overkill. A powerful start, to say the least. And honestly, that start is what gets Overkill the round one win. You know, you're looking at the stats here. Let me, let me maximize. <sighs> Quite a few shots on goal. I mean, again, a really close. You're really looking at. I'm looking at the stat comparison. Very close. Saluna, obviously, the leader for Redshift there with eight goals or eight points being scored and an assist. So involved in every sh every point scored by Redshift. I think if you go back and look at the replay, Saluna is almost always positioned in that center spot, and so they're likely to be the one to intercept that cross pass and end up putting it in for the two, and we saw that happen plenty of times in this round. Uh, 
Everyone else, though, did get involved. If they didn't have a goal, they did have an assist on Redshift's side. Same goes for Overkill, although the points spread out a little bit far, a little bit more there. Those open threes getting sunk in, one of them by Anubis and one of them by Knife. I don't know how you could... Oh, yeah, I do know how. Never mind. Uh, one of them by Ghost Duck, excuse me. Knife would not have been able to score a three, because if we do math, three plus one is four, and that's how many points they have, and you can't score one point. We all know that, so... We could get VR and Echo Arena into the school books, is what I'm trying to say here. There's some great math equations lined up that I have to process daily that I think would be great topics for anyone, uh, you know, in their uh, learning, whatever, when you learn math. You could be any age to learn math. You don't have to be a specific age. I was going to say when you're younger, but anyone can learn math at any age, okay? If you don't know how to do math, now's the time to learn. Tune into an Echo Arena cast with Nightfire, and you'll maybe learn a thing or two about the pluses and minuses which is actually called addition and subtraction. So now you're learning English too. It's a big, it's a full course meal here uh, when you tune in for the solo cast. We were waiting for a fourth to reconnect. So if you think, wow, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He can't even f talk about Echo Arena. I'm just filling time, people, okay? I'm filling time between what is going to be an extended round past the likely minute between rounds, okay? Out the gate, though, like I said, a good start for Overkill, and they managed to then continue to battle back against Redshift, uh, you know, nullifying those two pointers with two pointers of their own until finally Redshift started to string some aggression together, started to get some good passing sequences through. Uh, even when they were down three, Overkill still did a good job, and so hopefully we have all our connection issues sorted and we will be into uh, the action soon enough, but. Uh. I do see in chat, uh, what's the match for 6 p.m. PST? Thank you for reminding me about that. As we do delay between rounds, we get ever closer to that matchup. Uh, I will be joined by Wonder T Man on the casting, or on the casting, that'd be great, on the camera desk. I'll be solo for that one. But it is going to be Milo versus Ethereal. Uh, and so do keep the eyes peeled for that. And after that, we'll actually be doing a uh, redemption match, a, redemption, uh, a request from points to have the match casted by Heatwave. And so we'll be jumping into Rewind versus Heatwave. Also, a uh, pretty highly upvoted match to be casted, so we'll be tuning into that. But yeah, another master match, and then uh, I believe a platinum tier match is uh, where those two teams sit in rank. Uh, Milo, I don't know, M-I-L-O. I'm just out here pronouncing things like phonics. Actually, I don't know how phonics would have you pronounce that, but that's beside the point. That's a different course. We're only here for math and English, phonics, something else. Uh, we do have everyone in lobby, so I do wonder what the holdup is. Maybe a ping issue, I presume. And hopefully we will have sorted shortly. Grenade popping into chat. How long is an Echo rematch? Typically 30 minutes. A best of three with each round at 10 minutes apiece. Obviously room for technical timeouts in between, but usually it's a minute between rounds. And so you tip if you have a if you have a map three decider, then you can get to 30 minutes. Otherwise, that can be as short as 20. Even shorter if you end up with mercies, which is 20 points to uh, which is a 20 point lead at any point in the game that uh, ends that that round. So a couple of variables that could determine it to be longer, and obviously with timeouts, a late start, we might not be done until 6 o'clock, which, again, would move us right into our next game. Um, I really don't know what the holdup is, truth, truthfully. It could be, for my production in the ear... Uh, telling me that it could be a hydration break, trying to utilize that full timeout to uh, to uh, get locked in. I'm also getting information that I need to hydrate, so... Uh, there you go. Get a little bit of that liquid in your system. Keep the pipes wet for the action so you can hear the deep baritone of my voice. It's vital that I maintain a clear... Should I cast like this? Hello and welcome. 
really get into my baritone. Anyway, still in timeout. Appreciate everyone tuning in. How is chat doing is my next question. It is quite toasty here. I've just had to redirect the AC to directly hit me in the face. So if you do see my hair start to blow in the wind, not only is it for sex appeal, but also so that I stay cool. So, round two. Looking like timeout is up. Could be getting into this in nine seconds. We did it, chat. We stalled with some nonsense, but we're here for our next action-packed round between Redshift and Overkill. And Overkill kick it off to a good start, but look at this. Redshift patiently waiting, not trying to get too aggressive, not committing the full team. Instead, they have two on defense, and the stack that goes out for the clear overshoots. And so we remain scoreless going into the first 20 seconds with the disc floating inside Redshift's zone. And now Redshift essentially getting an offensive joust. There's a quick stack coming in and a huge intercept. Massive intercept from Caesar. Can't quite fully clear it, but that time bot means Redshift is here to defend. They're ready and waiting for the overkill push. And uh, wow, a chaotic kickoff to things, obviously, with that joust, but we've seemed to settle in to right back into things here. A nice clear that ends up in the trap. Anubis is there. Scoops it up, keeps Overkill on the offenses, offensive, an unfortunate clear that doesn't quite go down in the tunnel. Let's see if that missed clear ends up in points. It does. The one, two, three, Anubis with a great assist from Gunny. Gets that two with a nice cross, and Redshift did their best to battle back, almost had it pushed out of their zone, but couldn't quite get it through the tunnel. Interesting to see the theory crafting on how long a game could go. I don't like to see it, because maybe you're going to jinx us into going the longest possible game ever in the history of Echo Arena, but we'll find out. As we are into round two already, and it could be over after this. If Overkill maintain the lead, Redshift will lose another game to Overkill. They're fourth in a row to be exact, as they have not managed to take a W against them in the three times they've faced off in Season 5. Clear down, and nice to see Steel waiting and ready inside their trap on their side, trying to juke around what is a very aggressive ghost duck. That duck not much of a ghost as they're right in the face of their opponent, and a good clear here from Overkill. The defensive stack gets back in time, though, as the trio overshoots the disc. Ultimately, Anubis, with a nice assist from Nifrich, does find two. And we see the <laughs> Anubis celebration dance as they push their team up. Four to zero now, a two-goal lead. But not exactly a comfortable place to be in. 7.20 ticked down. This looks a bit similar to that of the start of round one, where Overkill came out with a 6-0 lead. Not to see how long it takes Redshift to battle this lead back and put some points back on the board, but I do anticipate them to string something together. Here's a nice offensive push, a little 360, and tries to toss it in, but Pub, I think, gets stunned out in the middle of that maneuver, and Disc floats wide. A clear here, bounces down to the trench, and Pub with a fantastic steal. Stops this overkill offense from pushing forward. The clear there does get into Steel's hands, but a, a huge, I mean, this aggressive defense really just not allowing for Redshift to set anything up on the attack, and then they go right back in to the attack. Fortunate enough, Redshift are putting on a, good, a solid defensive display themselves. They've managed to deny a couple of shots on goal, and maybe finally they'll find themselves an opportunity here. Pub tries to work their way around Anubis, but ends up floating that disc a touch wide. That pass goes a touch wide, and Pub is there to scoop it up. Tries to get it down to steal at the bottom of the zone, but can't. Thankfully, Caesar is sitting in the middle and waiting for that clear. So they get it up, scoop it up, keep Redshift on the attack. A bit of a pass that goes wide there from Pub. Floats right into the hands of Knife, an almost botched clear. A botched clear keeps the disc into Redshift's hands and the aggressive Anubis in the face of the QB tries to disrupt. Ghost, again, not a ghost. That hist is physical. Ends up stunning out their opponent, clearing it downrange. Defense is here in time, and Caesar 
scoops up the disc. Our longest time between goals now in this series as we wait to see. Can the open three get sunk? No! Oh, no! An open three opportunity or at the very worst. The two goes missed. And can Redshift instead find the opportunity for the two? There's a nice clear to Caesar, and Caesar floats past the duo, drawing out the aggression and ultimately, finally, finds Redshift some points. Took them maybe three minutes to get that goal in. No, two, sorry. I'm an exaggerator. Two minutes to get that goal in. Bit of a pass down there to Ghost Duck, working their way up for the attack. That's a great pass to the top of the zone, but the defense is here, and a huge stun out from Caesar disrupts the pass and what was a ready to and waiting uh, offense to attack. Ghost Duck does some floor work, avoids Pub trying to scoop up this disc and stun them, but ultimately misses the shot. Still, though, floats into the hands of Overkill and a fantastic dive. Finally gets the disc out of their bubble. It was a long time that they weathered that attack, and maybe now they'll be able to tie things up here as they do get their chance at an offensive push. They're working their way around the defense. They're doing some pub, doing some dodging of their own. Gets themselves a dunk. And <laughs> that is a interesting rebuttal to what was just put on display there from pub who couldn't get the stun out they ultimately bounce back with some juking of their own and i love to see that both of these teams obviously skilled and knowledgeable of the uh, ins and outs of this game it's what you get at the master tier you get the best of the best in echo arena and we're certainly seeing some very good teams duking it out here some very solid pass work here from overkill to get them up through the midfield We'll see if they can set up for the attack. They're trying to get Anubis in there for the stun on goal. You can see Steel trying to avoid that stun. And while they do get the stun, the passes are trying are, are, are disrupted. The defense is playing a good zone defense, preventing anything from getting set up. And ultimately, a nice stun there. A pass to the back of the zone, though. And finally, in what was a multitude of attempts from overkill, they find themselves two points. Four unanswered there for a while, at least, from Redshift. But they now have the lead with three minutes left. Only two points, not comfortable, not something that they can relax with. And if anything, something within Redshift's reach. Interesting to not see that duo dive out instantly for Saluna, instead waiting for Saluna to pass to Caesar. And unfortunately, a missed pass there from Caesar ends up with an intercept and a full clear. Steel diving out of the goal ends up getting their hands on the disc under extreme amounts of pressure has to clear it to the side but can't quite get it out of the tunnel. Nice pass there to the side. Ghost Duck scoops it up, tries to work their way up and a missed, pat, missed shot on goal to the bottom of the zone. An attempt at a clear gets quickly scooped up by Gunny. A big intercept keeps things in Overkill's favor and Anubis again with the points. Certainly that leader in scoring here. They've been, they've been finding themselves at the center of the bubble for all of these cross passes. And, well, it was four points. And a tie is now four points in a lead. We need Redshift to find something here. As they go on their offensive joust, two-minute drill kicking in. The pressure starting to mount as that missed pass does get intercepted. Every little mistake gets punished at this level. You can see that uh, now you find Redshift on the back foot. 1v2 presents itself. Steel dives out for the stun and a very nice dive at that. Able to disrupt that 1v2 opportunity truly. And ultimately the rest of the defense comes in to support them. So Redshift able to prevent this attack for now. Steel though can't disrupt the stun and stop the goal though. And that is, again, good teamwork coming in from the overkill side. Really doing a nice job of working together, disrupting the goal, opening up that two, and chipping away, growing their lead to what could be insurmountable now, unless some threes get sunk in here by Redshift. This could be insurmountable. 
time also obviously a factor now as we get into the back minute. An open three presents itself, and uh-oh. Overkill and what looks like a confident position now finds themselves only at a three-point lead, a one-goal lead. 20 seconds roughly left for this Redshift team to do something here, but it has to be a three, essentially. They have to score a three. They don't have the option of a two. And if anything, yeah, Anubis can self-goal. That will end up ticking the clock down, and Overkill is going to take the series with a one-point lead. Just barely getting away with it, but they do. And, well, we're done almost on time. <laughs> As two rounds finish and Overkill takes a W. Ooh. A, uh, well, a tactical way to wrap things up. You know, just like kneeling in uh, football or a bunch of variety of other strats and a variety of other games. Uh, we do see that self-goal to tick the clock down. They had enough points in the lead to do it. and The reality of the situation. Overall, a solid performance from both teams, though, and exactly what I anticipated going into this matchup between Redshift and Overkill. Redshift coming in here with a bone to pick, but they couldn't quite pick it. Overkill take another W, their fourth win against Redshift in their career against Redshift. Four out of four. And, uh, well, while certainly a tough pill for Redshift to swallow, again, they can look back and at least reflect on the fact that they did play well, and they did go up against the Overkill uh, with everything they had, and so... A fun matchup to tune into. We are going to go to a brief break. Stream's going to go offline for roughly 10 to 15 minutes, and we're going to come back with Milo, Milo, or Milo, however you want to say it, versus Ethereal, Ethereal, or Ethereal, however you want to say that one. Potatoes, potatoes, I say, but that's coming up at 6 p.m. PST. Um, do tune in to that matchup, and again, 20 minutes from now. That'll be it for us here, though. For now, my name has been Nightfire with two E's. My cameraman, the fantastic, the ever-loving offbeat. We appreciate them behind the scenes. Give them a shout-out. Until 20 minutes from now, I'll see you around. VRML Echo Arena is brought to you by HyperX Asterian Products Order Foods VR Cover ProTube VR Rebuff Reality and VRWare.net